My name is Lisa Lamb of SewLisaLamb.com and today I want to introduce you to saddle stitching. So this film is great for people who have never saddle stitched before and they don't have any fancy tools because you don't actually need any to get going. So I'll show you what saddle stitching looks like. So I have here a satchel style bag and you can see all of the white stitching all of the stitching on this bag is one stitch only and that is saddle stitched and the features are of the stitches it's super super strong and it has nice plump neat and hopefully regular size stitches and the stitches themselves are continuous so there's no there's no gaps in any of the holes so as I said before, this entire bag is stitched with saddle stitch. And I should say that the stitches look exactly the same on the front as they do on the back. Okay, right, so the kits are that I stock are saddle stitched kits. And this is the booklet front for the painted bag. And uh, they are all available from sewlisalam.com. Um, but today, even though the instructions on how to saddle stitch are, are fully explained inside the booklet, I thought it'd be nice to do just a quick video uh, to show you me doing it. And now you can see for yourself just how easy and how addictive it is. So um, a bit of a word about saddle stitching and its differences from typical hand sewing because saddle stitch is hand stitched is that you're using two needles at the same time as opposed to one needle and those two needles are stitched simultaneously and when you stitch you you're stitching sort of like zigzagging your line so as you're stitching along one line and you use two needles you stitch in a well, in a fashion that my fingers are making and the threads wrap around each other, making the line of stitches incredibly strong and durable. And also they help you to fill the holes. So basically saddle stitch is a running stitch, but two needles are running alongside each other to create that really attractive, really neat looking line of stitches with no holes in. Um, and another thing that's really different about saddle stitching is that when you cut your threads, you don't just cut your thread and you kind of guess, well, usually when you cut your thread, you cut it hopefully a bit longer than you'll need and hopefully that you won't need to knot on any more thread if you cut it too short. But if you do cut it sh too short, that's fine. You can just knot on more. But with saddle stitching, you can't do that. Um, so I'll just bring my bag again to show you to explain. Imagine that you are, for argument's sake, stitching on this front pocket to the bag front. Imagine you've cut your thread and then you get to here and find, oh, you've run out of thread. Well, you cannot just simply knot on more thread to your needles because at some point you're going to end up with really unattractive joining knot on your stitches and that's just simply a no-go you just don't do it if you were to cut your thread too short to stitch on this part or any other part of your bag you're simply going to have to unwind all of your stitches it's a little bit it's not the end of the world but it's very very annoying you'll have to unpick everything and start all over again so when you saddle stitch wallets or purses or bags you need to cut your thread pretty much too long um, in my in my booklets I always provide you with um, the thread length that you'll need to cut any piece of bag that you'll be working on at any given time so there's no guesswork involved okay, so that's that's really really important okay and now threading needles threading needles is different to the way that you usually thread your needles when hand sewing and um, I'll show that to you now so I've got here, um, oh, I should have a word about tools. What tools do you need when you're saddle stitching? Well, when you're starting out, you don't need any fancy tools. So basically what you need is a comfy chair, 
your favourite TV programme and uh, a nice mug of tea. You will need also um, two needles. Now, um, the needles can be different thicknesses. Um, some, are, some are a bit more pointy. Some of them are a bit more blunt. Um, you'll find that they are they do typically tend to be a bit longer and they have fatter eyes because the threads are thicker. So the thread that comes with the Cambridge kit and this is the Cambridge kit. So you see everything comes included. All of your buckles, metalware, you just see the thread there. There's even some snippy snips and uh, inside there'll be some rivets and your needles as well. But I'll give you a close-up of the thread. The thread is usually thicker and it's waxed. This helps the thread um, not snap and it helps the thread glide through the holes. And it's really, really pleasant to work with. And it's mega, mega strong. So it doesn't matter how, how much you tug your thread, that's not snapping for anybody. You will also, um, to end your stitches, you'll also need some solvent-based glue. Um, and I usually apply that with an old seam ripper. So I usually use the tip of the ripper to put on the thread ends. I'll show you this later on in the film. And I use the um, blunt end to smush the glue into the threads. But yeah, I will explain this later. Uh, and another thing that's really, really useful is sewing clips. Um, so you know when usually when you're sewing, you'll use either sewing clips or needles to hold uh, your pieces in place while you're sewing. Well, obviously you won't be using pins um, in for this kind of bag because obviously you don't want to be puncturing any holes in um, the PU. Oh, one thing I forgot to add. The great thing about these kits is, I don't know if you can see that, all of the pieces are ready cut and they're all pre-punched and everything fits together as it should. There's no guesswork involved, there's no cutting, there's no measuring, everything fits as it should. There aren't too many holes for anything and there aren't too few holes for anything either which is really really assuring which means that you can just simply relax and so without having to think too much about measurements and angles and such okay right now threading the needles threading the needles is really easy but uh, um, i imagine it's slightly different to what you're used to so i've cut myself a length of thread this is just a random length of thread because i'm only going to be showing you a bit of stitching it doesn't matter you know about the length because i'm just this is just for demo purposes only. So there's one long piece of thread that I'm going to be threading. So it's one continuous thread, but I'm going to thread the two needles on. And I suggest that if you are a beginner, you've never done it before, you don't have to do this, but I found it, I find it's helpful. Um, it's to colour your thread ends different colours. So I've just got a, a normal biro here and I'm going to colour one end this rather nice turquoise colour and I'm going to colour another end uh, this nice pink colour <coughs> excuse me <coughs> excuse me uh, and this is going to help me differentiate my two needles and it helps me get into less of a pickle now when you're first sewing you might think oh what needle goes where but honestly within i would say like eight to ten to fifteen stitches you probably won't need to focus on what kind of threads you're using you'll just get into a rhythm and you'll find that it doesn't you know you know where you are but maybe for the first few stitches colored thread ends is a nice idea so i'm just going to take one of the needles and i'm going to cut thread one of them using this turquoise thread and then I just push the thread through the eye of the needle like so and then uh, about, about an inch down from the thread end I'm going to 
take the tip of the needle and I'm going to push the tip of the needle in through the thread middle. So what I've done there is if I move my finger, I've created like a bow. See, so I've threaded the needle through the middle of the thread about an inch down from the end. And then I pull, I'm going to pull on the long thread. And then I'm going to pull on the thread end, give that a little tug. And now when I try and pull the needle off the thread, you'll see that I can't. And that's really, really important because saddle stitching, after every saddle stitch you make, you need to tug your threads because this is what's going to create tight and plump stitches, um, which is really important to the attractiveness and the strength of your stitching. So I'm going to, so that's one end of the thread needled, and now I'll do the other one. It's the same again. It's very, very easy to thread these needles because the eye of the needle is nice and flat. So about an inch down, I push the tip of the needle into the middle of the thread, pull on the long thread, and then the short tail, give that a tug, and there. So I'm now ready to begin. So that's one thread with two needles on and ready to go. So I'm just going to pick up a random piece um, from the kit. So this this piece here just so happens to be the gusset, but it doesn't matter. I'm just sewing it now to show you how to do some saddle stitching. Okay, so you can saddle stitch either from the right side of your work or from the wrong side of your work. It really, really doesn't matter. The only difference being is sometimes, depending on the part of uh, your bag that you're sewing on, it might be easier to access um, the area that you need to sew either from the front or from the back. So I'm going to show you both ways. It doesn't, like I say, neither neither front nor back is easier or better. It's just, it's just it helps with access sometimes. So I'm going to take both needles and. I'm going to show you, I'm going to show you saddle stitching from the back. So I've put here, because this PU is the same colour on both sides, I've put here this uh, yellow square to, just to show you that that is the front and the bit that's facing me is the wrong side. So I'm going to take my needles and into the first two holes, I'm going to push both the needles like so and it doesn't matter whether it's the pink one or the green one makes no difference so there that's and i'm going to pull and note that um there is an equal equal length of thread on both needles at the very beginning that's very very important because you you want to be able to make sure that both needles will be able to reach the end of the work so it's no good if one needle has loads more thread than the other needle so right so this is so that's how it looks at the front right the right side right now and this is how it'll look on the back so at the back it's actually from the from the front i'm just going to tip the camera down a bit so that i can work a little bit more easily so so the two needles we're now we're now we now have a view of the right side i'm going to take the the rear side needle when i say the rear side needle so I, the rear side needle is um has is the thread that's at the back it's at the back so the rear side needle is nearest to me and the leading needle is facing away from me. So I take the rear side needle and what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to push it into the next, into the next hole along, which is this hole, which has the leading needle coming out of it. So the rear side needle is the pink needle and the leading needle is the turquoise needle. Now, before I push the rear side thread into this hole i need to make sure that this thread isn't going to be isn't going to block the needle 
And I do that by taking the leading thread and pulling on it so that I'm actually making space. So I'm pulling this thread to one side of the hole so that when I push the needle, the rear, the rear needle in through the hole, I'm not going to stitch through the fibres of this thread. Because if you do that, it looks ugly and also it compromises the strength of the thread. So this, for every stitch, it's really important to pull the forward leading thread out of the way. And then that's one stitch. Now I'm, I'll make another. So the next thing I have to do is now this pink thread has now been stitched to the wrong side of the work. And the next thing to do is to push the needle up through the next hole and give that a little bit of a pull. Now I put the pink needle, which is now the leading thread, I put that down on the table and then I take the pink thread and as before, I'm going to pull it to one side because now I'm going to take the rear needle, which is now the turquoise needle, and I'm going to stitch it into the next hole like so. And pull. And with each stitch, pull both threads and that locks the stitch and it makes sure that your stitches are nice and firm and tight. And then I take that blue thread, which I've just stitched into the wrong side, and I push it up through the next hole to the right side. And then I put that down. That's just my door because my husband comes in for a run. And I take the back thread and push that into the next hole. And the leading thread is pushed, pulled out of the way as before. And then I pull. And the pink thread, which has just been stitched through, gets stitched up to the next hole. And I repeat. And as you get more comfortable with saddle stitching, I promise you, by about eight to ten stitches or so, you'll find a rhythm that suits you. And you'll also find various ways of gripping your work that you're comfortable with as well. I'm holding it in a slightly awkward way, obviously, because I am filming this. You'll most likely have it on a table or maybe on a TV tray on your lap. You'll find that a lot more comfortable. You don't usually hold it in the air like this. Okay, so, so yeah, it's quite simple, really. And that is saddle stitching from the wrong side. So saddle stitching from the right side is just as easy. I will thread up another piece of thread and then show you how to saddle stitch from the right side. ready to go. I'm not going to bother colouring the pieces this time. Okay, so working on this same piece again, I'm just going to stitch on the other side now. So remember the yellow sticker denotes that this, this is the right side of the bag. So before, when I was stitching from the wrong, wrong side, I just pushed my needles up from the wrong side of this PU piece up to the right side. And so stitching from the front side, um, unsurprisingly, involves you stitching from the right side. So you, pr you push both your needles in the first few couple of stitches from the front. So you stitch from the right side to the wrong side. And then at the back, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the leading thread, the forward thread, pull it under tension 
so it's out of the way so that I can take the back thread and then stitch it into the same hole like so and then I pull and then I take the back the thread that I've just stitched to the back that gets stitched into oh sorry so I take the <laughs> so I take the thread that's coming out of the front stitch that into the next hole and then I take that thread, take this thread, put it to one side so that it's almost like leapfrogging really. And actually, once you get comfortable with it to the stage where you're not really thinking about what you can do, you're doing, you can stitch from the right side or the wrong side interchangeably. You might even find that for some reason you prefer saddle stitching from the front or from the back. Like I say, neither is wrong and neither, not, neither is better and they look exactly the same. It's just that, like I say before, you might feel more comfortable stitching from the right or the wrong side or you might find that accessing your work is easier from your the chosen direction. So there, so, so as you can see, Stitching from the right or the wrong side looks exactly the same. Okay, right, so. I was talking about finishing off your stitches. So I've showed you how to start your stitches and I've showed you how to sew a few stitches. I'm now going to show you how to end your stitches. So let's just pretend that I've now reached the end of my stitches. So the end of my stitches will be all fit holes filled in from here to here and all holes filled in from here to here. So ending your stitches, that, now we can't, we can't sew any securing stitches and we can't secure, we can't tie in any knots to end our stitches. What you need to do is you need to take your thread and actually stitch it back three to four stitches and then that, that, that will provide enough tension to prevent the threads from unravelling and ever coming undone. It's very, very secure. So what I'll do is I'll, I'll start with the top thread. It doesn't matter if I start off with the top thread or the bottom thread. And simply all you do is you take your needle and you stitch. You begin to back stitch. You stitch a back running stitch into your existing stitches. And if you pull quite firmly, the look is quite subtle. So if you look carefully, yes, you'll see that, um, that, the, that the stitch holes do have two threads in. But if you pull firmly, it is subtle and you don't really see it unless you're looking. So I've sewed three, I've sewed back on myself three times there. So that was with the top thread. Now I need to turn to the wrong side and I need to repeat. So basically just back running stitch on yourself. So this is now where my threads have ended up. So. Uh, on, for the first thread, I sewed back three stitches, and for the thread on the back, I sewed back two stitches, and this is now what it like it looks like. So now I need to trim these excess threads. Remember, we're not knotting; we don't need to because we've stitched back on ourselves, and that creates enough tension to prevent the threads from unraveling. And I will get my snips. And you need to trim these threads about two to three millimetres long. Right, so. So it looks like, looks like that. And then this is what you needed the glue for. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to apply glue 
to these very short thread ends using the, the tip of this old seam ripper and I'm going to make sure that the glue really gets pressed into the fibres of the thread end so th they've started to splay that's absolutely fine and actually that's better because that means that you can really get the glue inside those fibres and as you apply the glue try not to get it all over the PU I know that this glue doesn't attack the PU, which is brilliant, but either way, you don't want to be tempting fate by, you know, splodging glue all over the place. So, I use my, I use the tip of my old seam ripper, and I'm just really pressing the glue into those fibres. And put the cap on really quickly, because this stuff comes screaming out all the time and then we're going to let it cure we're going to let it cure for um, a minute perhaps i'll flip it around to speed up the process a little it's important that you do let it dry a bit otherwise as you do the next step if it's not dry a little bit it just kind of slides off the fly fibres, it hasn't really adhered itself and won't do nearly as secure a job. Okay, that feels pretty good. And then using the heel of the seam ripper, all you're going to do is you're simply going to smush, press those fibre ends into the line of stitching and be firm press down hard and then what I like to do is I like to get my thumbnails or fingernails and then push the fibres into the line of stitching because what we're aiming for is as an invisible finish as possible and then you can always also press in any of those stray ends with your finger and there you should see that's really that's really neat that's really neat it doesn't look like you know there's anything untoward and untidy there at all and that's how it will look from the front and as you can see yes that it is slightly thicker there where there's double threads but it's subtle it's tied you know it's still very very tidy it's still professional looking which is what we're always aiming for okay so Hopefully that's been a, um, an easy enough introduction to saddle stitching if you've not done it before and from and for the first time. Um, it's really, really addictive. It's really, really easy. Um, you'll find yourself just saying to yourself, oh, I'll just sew this line and then I'll sew another line and then I'll stop and come back. And then before you know it, you've finished your bag. Uh, it, yes, it happens to me all of the time. Um, I just wanted to add, if you do really enjoy saddle stitching and you can see yourself doing a lot of it in the future, you might want to consider um, getting yourself a stitch pony. And what is a stitch pony, I hear you ask? Well, it is one of these. I actually um, ordered one last week and um, it arrived yesterday. I'm so excited. So this is uh, basically what this is, is it's a clamp that holds your saddle stitching in in space, in the air, so it frees your hands, so you don't need a table anymore. This sort of um, platform thing here, you actually sit on this, or you just put your leg over it. Well, I'm going to try and place it on my chair here, and then see if I can um, get it in situ. So oh, what I did not say is this, it, it has, a clamp which is very quickly and easily released so when I press on this lever the jaws loosen and then you can get your your work in and out quite easily but it grips the work in the air so that you can just saddle stitch without having to hold your work and what I love about it is it's really inexpensive so okay so I'm now now got it into position and I'm just going to put the work here and clamp it and then pretend that I am saddle stitching. So if you look at this, 
not very graceful looking, but um, you should be able to see that now I can just I can look I can just turn my head either way to see where my needles are going and I don't and I don't need to grip too much ah. and, it, and it holds it in the air and this is a nice this is a nice high platform just in case you happen to be making um, working on a sizable area so it's very versatile and I thought I would tell you about it you you know you you definitely don't need one you definitely don't need one to stitch any of my kits um, but because I enjoy them and I see lots of them in my future I got one and um, I purchased it from I purchased it from an online site and I've included the link um, on this YouTube film uh, they're well this one this one cost me 9.99 arrived really quickly very impressed but you can get them from the Long River and expect to pay anything between 10 to 15 pounds. You can get some very, very fancy ones which can clamp to the table and, you know, they can be, you know, be set at any angle. But I think that this one at 9.99 is going to be absolutely fine for my purposes. But I do repeat, you don't need one. They're just something that's nice to have and it frees your hands. And I wanted one because I can see myself um, making lots and lots of these kits in the future so right so i hope i didn't ramble on too much uh, and i hope that that was helpful uh, i'll see you again thanks for watching bye